Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda. If you follow me on social media like Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram, you probably already know, but I am now a proud member of Kin Community or Cake Community in my books. I'm trying to get them to change their name. <laughs> One of my signature <laughs> winks right there. That better make it in. So to celebrate, I'm gonna make my favorite vanilla cake recipe here for you step by step. So many of you asked me about it. It is on my blog at howtocakeit.com, but I'm gonna do it here live. Well, not quite live, but in person. Well, not quite in person, but in a video for you that you can watch as many times as you want. If you want the full breakdown of ingredients, tools, and step-by-step -step instructions on how to make this cake, just head to my blog at howtocakeit.com or click the link in the description below. Let's get started making vanilla cake. I'm gonna give you a few important tips. First of all, baking is a science, so always remember to measure your ingredients properly. That's tip number one. My second tip is to make sure that your butter, eggs, and milk are at room temperature before you start making your cake batter. If you're curious as to why, check out my blog on howtocakeit.com where I go through all my tips and tricks and any insider information that you need in the cake community. Let's get started. The first thing you'll need to do is take the bowl of your electric mixer and add your butter, sugar, and vanilla into your bowl. Now you need to fit your bowl with a paddle attachment. A lot of you asked me if you can use a hand mixer. If you are using a hand mixer, my tip to you would be to make a lesser portion of this batter because you really want to take your time and move your hand mixer around your bowl and get all those ingredients blended together nicely, especially your butter and sugar. Get Get your bowl and your paddle attachment set up on your mixer and have it ready to go. I'm gonna get my other ingredients ready, starting with my eggs. They look <laughs> excellent in this bowl. <laughs> I've pre-sifted my flour and now I'm going to add my baking powder and my salt. And I like to just use a whisk to get it well blended throughout the flour. Now we're gonna set our mixer on medium high speed to beat the butter and sugar and vanilla all together until light and fluffy. This takes about five to eight minutes. Use a rubber spatula and scrape it all down and off the sides of your bowl. It's time to add our eggs. Add your eggs at the lowest speed, which is stir. And I like to add two eggs at a time and then halfway through, stop, scrape down my bowl again. You just wanna mix your eggs until they're incorporated. You never wanna over beat the eggs into the batter. Now we're gonna add the rest of our eggs two at a time once again. Our eggs are nicely incorporated. I'm gonna scrape down the bowl once again. Now it's time to alternate my dry ingredients with my wet ingredient, which in this case is whole fat milk. I always begin and end with dry, and I add my dry ingredients in four parts and my wet in three. The reason you start with dry is because if I were to add this milk to this sort of fat-based mixture, it would just slosh around. It's kind of like trying to add oil to water. I'm gonna start by turning my mixer on to stir mode adding my first portion of flour, let it absorb a bit into the batter, and then add my first portion of milk. Now I'm gonna add my second portion of flour and my second portion of milk. Remember to let each ingredient absorb for about 20 seconds into the batter, or until it's not fully visible on top. Now I'm gonna add my third portion of flour and my final portion of milk. And finally, my last portion of flour. My batter is looking great. I'm gonna use my rubber spatula one more time to scrape down the paddle and the sides of the bowl. Once you've scraped down your bowl and paddle completely, turn your mixer back on to medium speed and beat your batter for 30 seconds to get it all nice and together. Oh guys, you have got to smell this. I should bottle this as a scent. Tell me you wouldn't buy a How to Cake It perfume. I always like to bake in professional baking pans. I never use nonstick pans. I really think that's a false promise. So what I do is line these with parchment paper. If you wanna bake in pans like this, you can shop for them below. There's a link in the description. This is how I line a pan. I take the pan, I lay it on some parchment paper, and then I use a pretty pencil to trace around the pan. 
I fold my parchment paper right at the end of that circle. And then I cut off the piece that I'm gonna cut with a knife. And you can see, or can you see? The circle drawn in my parchment. Guys, this is how How to Cake It should start. This is our curtain. Welcome back, it's Tuesday. Oh, you don't like my ideas. My producer's laughing, fine. <laughs> I like to just fold the circle onto itself in half. Just cut all along the half circle. You can see the pencil line right through the parchment. And there you have it. And now, what? And then you have this gorgeous. <laughs> When's lunch? I also don't grease the inside of my pans because I let my cakes cool completely in their pan and as you'll see later, it really just isn't necessary. <laughs> so, I don't grease my pans. Okay, ready? <laughs> Once again, I have made a six pound portion of my vanilla cake batter, which I'm gonna divide between two nine inch pans. I just press down with my friend rubber spatula and make sure it's sort of evenly distributed in each pan and don't leave any on the rubber spatula. I like him, but he can't have my cake better. I saw that, Jocelyn. <laughs> Another handy trick is to take a knife and run it through your batter. I just do like a grid. And then bang your pans onto your table and this is to remove air. The air will rise up. It will also do that in the oven, but give it a head start. There you go. Time to bake these gorgeous vanilla cakes at 350 degrees for about an hour. Always test them at the end with a toothpick or a cake tester inserted in the middle and when it comes out clean, your cake is done. Now I'm gonna remove my cakes from my pans using a straight palette knife. And what you do is you just run this palette knife all along the edge between the cake and the pan. And as you can see, just a little shimmy and your cake comes out nice and easy. Remove your parchment paper. And now we can begin to level this cake. So I'm gonna level off the top of the cake so it's nice and flat and there's no crust. If you want some more step-by-step -step instructions on how to level a cake like I do, there's a link in the description below. My cakes are leveled. Now there's a difference between a vanilla cake and a white cake. A white cake requires baking with shortening, which I am not a fan of and it also requires you only using egg whites. So, this is my preference. It's not that white, but it is delicious. I'm ready to fill and crumb coat my vanilla cake. I've got one recipe of my favorite Italian meringue buttercream right here, as well as the all-important simple syrup in this gorgeous simple syrup bottle. This bottle is amazing because it's literally like a shower for your cakes. It's just a way to lock in moisture in your cake. Let it absorb. You can get both my recipe for buttercream and this simple syrup bottle at howtocakeit.com. There's a link in the description below. I like to bring it right to the edge, a little over, because that buttercream that's over the edge will just contribute to our crumb coat. Layer number two. I don't know why, but doing this is making me so happy. Okay, top layer. And there you go, time to crumb coat. To crumb coat this cake, I like using a straight spatula. So just press all the way around, use up all the extra buttercream first. And if you do need more, take a little from your bowl. Make sure you cover it entirely, especially right down at the bottom. And then ice the top of your cake as well. Same method, pressing down. That's a crumb coat. Place your cake in your fridge for about half an hour or until when you touch the buttercream, it doesn't come off on your hands. It's nice and chilled. Oh no, do you see my Crocs? I see your Crocs. I don't want Crocs in the video. Too late. <sighs> I should really endorse Crocs. I might be one of the only people willing to do this. My cake is crumb coated, nice and chilled. What I'm gonna do now is ice this baby, put some buttercream on top, and spread it around with my offset spatula the same way that I filled the cake. And then with my straight spatula, 
I'm going to ice the sides. Add buttercream all the way around as you go and work your way up. So I like to think about it as covering the bottom, then the middle, then the top. And when you have buttercream all the way around your cake, I like to use a metal bench scraper to ice my cakes, especially round cakes. I find it really helpful and really easy. I measured my cake and my cake is five and a half inches tall, so this bench scraper is six inches tall. You want your bench scraper to be just a tiny bit taller than your cake. So you'll notice as you scrape, all the excess buttercream comes to the top. So we're gonna take care of that a little bit now. We're gonna use our spatula flat and pull off the excess. It's really important to ice your cake smooth before covering it in rolled fondant. It's a myth that fondant hides everything. This is not true. If there's any pockets or dips or your cake is crooked, fondant will only accentuate that. So we're gonna put this cake in the fridge to chill. Rocks. Nice sauce. I'm leaving. <laughs> Time for fondant, my favorite part of decorating a cake. Now I can move on to decorating. I'm going to move this lovely cake onto this stand because it goes with um, the Kin community or cake community colors, as you can see. Use the spatula to help you. Make sure your cake is centered if you can. And then you want to just <sighs> drop it and pull the spatula out as fast as you can. And you can see it did lift fondant, that is to be expected. So now what I like to do is take my sharp knife and just press that fondant down gently. There you have it. Oh, and it's actually quite centered. I'm very proud of myself. If it isn't, use your flat hand as quickly as you can or a fondant smoother and just push your cake very gently. Very gently. Time for some decoration. Using some dyed gum paste, I have cut out the letters Kin Community and now I'm gonna glue them onto my cake. I'm just gonna brush on a little clear corn syrup as my glue. Sometimes I use clear corn syrup, sometimes I use piping gel. All my letters have a little bit of glue on them now, so I'm going to stick them to this gorgeous cake. Chad, how does it look? It looks good. <laughs> I'm excited, Jocelyn. <laughs> I'm part of Kin Community. You're blocking Chad. Check, check, this is not your show. Out of here. <laughs> Guess what, guys? Now the cake is part of Kin Community. The cake is part of the cake community. Oh, oh, yes, and I'm part of Kin Community. You're right. What would I do without Miss Jocelyn? My Kin Community gum paste cake topper that I made. We just place this right into the middle of our cake. See how it's like a leaf, like a tree, like a community? I'm gonna add a few of these leaves to the base of my cake, just here and there. You know, bring it up a notch. There you have it, guys. You know what time it is. Oh, wait, I need to add my kin leaf. Mm. This cake is so delicious. I wish I could share it with all the kin community creators. Big shout out to fellow Torontonian, Lord DIY, Rosanna Panzino, and Reardon of How to Cook That, and Hannah Hart, and all of you others out there who are equally amazing. I really wish I could give you a slice of this cake, but I'll just eat it for you and let you know how it is. Mm. It's really good. Really good. Let me try it again. Please subscribe to this channel. Go to my website, howtocakeit.com, and join the mailing list because you will get my videos before they even hit YouTube. How elite is that? Welcome to the cake community.